Hey, Henry. Mr. Blodgett, welcome aboard. So, uh, as promised, I'm going to get my um, my D-bit grinding setup going. And I'll show you guys. This is going to be a, uh, a real no-filtered, no <laughs> non-filtered uh, video. Let me just um, go take care of a couple things, and we'll get the grinder set up. Hello again, Tuck. Let's say hi to everyone here. So this might not be like super narrated, but uh, I'll do my best. I'm not sure where to put you. We'll just stick you right there. Hey, Warren. Welcome aboard. Hey, Chuck. How are you? So, Chuck, you, you realize this isn't the normal live. This is the live after the live. But nice to have you here. So I'm cleaning the chuck, which was previously cleaned. I'm just taking any oils off it. I bet you can't guess what I'm going to do next. Oh, nice to see you, uh, Chuck. Cool. Okay, yeah, Tuck, uh, I'll show you what I'm doing, and uh, it gets kind of interesting, so just hang in there. This is going to come as a shock, but I'm going to stone my Chuck. Not, not you, Chuck, this, this Chuck. When you're stoning, you're not just stoning, you're feeling also. So you, this is a two-way street here. You're, you're, you're learning what's going on on the surface through your fingers, and you're getting it all deburred and clean. And also, using your fingers is very important. i got to get my tea. So I'm doing this all dry, just, you'll see why. Uh, uh, I may have to do this the other way, let's do it the other way. Almost just finished a test grind with a Newly dressed wheel. Isn't that nice? <laughs> All right. Uh, I won't be able to see uh, the chat when I go around the camera here, but you guys will be able to follow. 
Um, okay, so what we have here is this is a pretty a pretty heavy setup. So this is the um, Suburban Tool Master Grind. It's uh, attached to a sign table, which is, I think, tight right now. I've got to get my... Yeah, i got to go retrieve my Allen wrenches. I'll be right back. Okay, so so this is the the sign table. Okay, um, can you see that? Yeah. So you have a roll here and a flat here, and the job is to put a put a height under here to get the angle. So for, uh, this is a five inches between rolls. So two and a half inches are needed to get the uh, 30 degree angle. So we're gonna set that up. We don't have any need to do any flat grinding um, or any, any horizontal grinding, I should say. Uh, so we're gonna just, just proceed and get this, uh, this, this angle set up first. So I'm gonna go get two gauge blocks a two inch and a half inch and show you how that works hey alexenko welcome aboard sir didn't see you uh earlier but glad you're here All right, we got, um, what's the cost of such a thing? So if you went to buy just this uh, master grind new, it's $2,500 or so. The motor is like $800. Um, if I had to do it all over again, I would have bought a used one. But at the time I had a project, I needed it, I bought it. That was cool. Uh, then the sign plate, I don't know, um, but you could, you know, find a good used one is my recommendation. Um, the motor, getting the motor was a debacle. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it, but anyway. So we have a two inch gauge block and a uh, half inch gauge block. And we're just gonna wipe them and ring them. Okay. And they are nicely rung. All right, so there's your angle. And now I'm going to tighten up the, the screws. I like to push down while I'm tightening it. Um, if you look at the Herman Schmidt uh, kit, they have a, a nice tensioner that goes between um, these screw holes and I haven't gotten around to making anything uh, to do that, but that's another good way to do it. So now, this whole rig is, is up at 30 degrees, and that's what we want. And that's not going to change. So I'm just going to leave the blocks in there. Uh, you know, I guess you can take them out if you felt like it, but this is the precise way to do it. And then we have a, um, a V-block here. And the V-block, let's see if I can slide that around. Yeah. So this V-block rides up and down in a channel here. And it has, there's multiple threaded holes. And this is where we can offset our part. Uh, the V-block puts it on center, uh, left to right. 
and then we could slide it up and down to center it or offset it. And in our case, we're offsetting it. So that's kind of the, the ticket. I haven't found anything close to that price. Everything I could find here in Germany is still upwards of 6,000 euro. Yow! Well, I, you know, I hate to say it, but you could probably um, buy it and, and ship it for a lot less than that. All right, so the other thing I did is I've replaced, this is the clamp for the V-block, and I've replaced the screw with a very long stainless steel screw. This is quarter 20. Um, sorry for our uh, European friends. But this guy will go all the way down to the bottom, and then they could tighten it up with this, uh, this nut. So that's how we're setting that. I'm going to go grab the D-bit itself. I'll be right back. How are we doing? So here's the D-bit itself. I'm going to stick it under the screw. And we should be good. So you'll also notice that I have a, um, a nylon acorn nut. Let me show you this. All right, I have a nylon acorn nut on the end there. So that's plastic. And there's a lot of ways to do this. And, you know, all I need is some pressure because once, once the bit is being pushed into the, into the V-block, it's not doing anything precise. It's just adding pressure. So I actually like the plastic for that purpose. Um, and then I double check to make sure that I'm going to be offsetting it in the direction I want to offset it. Uh, for the, for the uh, direction I'm cutting it. Now, this is a very, you know, high precision uh, pr <laughs> procedure here. I am using a, a scale. I'm putting the scale on the flat. I'm pinching it, right? And now I can rotate that to vertical and tighten up the nut. And now we're calibrated so that the notch is, is vertical. And now I'm reaching into my my belt pouch, I'm taking out my little Nipex, which I'm so happy with. I'll tell you, these Germans, they come up with some cool stuff. And I'm going to give this guy a Titan, right? And then I'm going to run my, my brass nut down, give that a Titan. Look at, look at how nice this little, this little tool is. I'm really thrilled with it. And this guy is now in there. It's not going anywhere. Um, let me give you a shot from the top. All right. So this is about um, six millimeters from from here to here. So I got plenty of room to come in here with my uh, grinding wheel, as you will see. Uh, this guy is going to be swinging around, right, like this. So we just have to be careful during our setup to make sure that we get that right. Um, so today what I'm going to do, uh, when, I, when I ground it before, I, I centered it up, which we'll do again, and then I pushed it down, uh, I think 15 thousandths, and that was too much. So we're going to reset this up, center it, and then push it down 5 thousandths, one third of that amount, and I think that might make me happier. And that's it. And then we're just going to do the conical grind on here and uh, we're done. Um, I'll show you how we do that. So just for transporting this over to the grinder, I'm going to put this on zero degrees and I'm going to lock it. So I'm pushing this pin in and now this thing is, is totally locked. Uh, and I'm going to spin the camera around now and so you can see my approach over to the grinder. Okay. 
So this is heavy now, right? We've got a sign plate, spin jig, not a small one either, and a motor. So this is like really heavy. So the first thing I'm gonna do, sorry I'm not gonna show you this because I forgot. I'm gonna stone the bottom of the sign plate. Forgive me for not showing you that. You can probably hear it. And it's totally clean. Okay. And then I'm gonna grab this again. And head over to the grinder. That was a lot of fun. So now on the bottom surface here, or I should say on the side surface of the chuck, I'm wiping it. All right. And I'm gonna use this as a spacer. Um, actually, I don't need the spacer. I'm just gonna take this flat I'm going to put this up against the, the uh, side of the chuck, and I'm going to pull this till it, it's aligned. So now the, the sign plate is aligned to the front edge of the chuck. And all I have to do now is turn on the Mac chuck, and it's going to stay put. And that's it. If I can push on this, and it is locked. It's not going anywhere. Now, <clears throat> the other important thing... How often do you take the, the mag, do you take off your magnet from the grinder? You mean the chuck? Uh, I haven't had it off since uh, I installed it just over a year ago. Um, so, when we, when we turn the magnet on, you have to take into account how much magnet you need and really you want to so this is let me take you over to the grinder hang on so you you have control of the of the chuck here right um and we're just we, we don't need much magnet in fact we could probably even go lower because we have a lot of surface area here so if you have a ton of surface area, you don't need a lot of, of magnet. So why not just use maximum magnet all the time? And the answer to that is it, it's going to make heat. So you don't need the heat in your chuck, which is going to influence your parts and start moving everything. So you want to use the smallest amount of current to make uh, to turn the magnet on as possible, but you don't want it too small because you want it to be rugged. Exactly. Go full PFG. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't need that on this one. <laughs> so there's your, there's your setup. Okay. Isn't the chuck water cooled? No, no, it isn't. Well, when the coolant is running, you can make the argument. Uh, but no, the only thing that chuck has going to it is electric. And I, I, I suppose there might be some situations where you can have uh, temperature control of the chuck, which I think would be, you know, pretty skookum. All right, let me turn you back around. All right. So I'm going to take, pull the pin out, make sure we're not hitting anything here. And just to make my point, okay, why you you check, you, you check, recheck, double check, all right, there's, there's the clearance of that bolt <laughs> to the sign plate. You know, that, if you don't pay attention to that, uh, you could end up with disaster. So, by, you know... Just checking, make sure everything is good before we apply any sort of power. 
Oh, your Mack truck is cooled. That's pretty. That's that is a slick, uh, slick design. I like it. Uh, still, it, it makes sense to use the smallest amount of current possible. But that is a really nice feature on your grinder. I'm gonna go plug this guy in. So I'm gonna make sure that it's off. Okay. So I think we're good to go here. Um, our wheel was uh, balanced, trued, and dressed. Uh, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it again because it didn't do a lot of grinding. So we balance. It has a it has a. Um, let me show you. It has a B200, a kinetic precision B200 balancing ring on it. And then we took it over to. Uh, to the balancer and we balanced it as tight as we can uh, it's really nice really sweet uh, we then used the molly dresser as per usual okay this is one of my creations it's actually <laughs> I put it away dirty I should be thrown out of the shop um, but all right there we got we got the schmutz off, okay. So we uh, dressed it. I'm sorry, we trued it with the molybdenum. Now this is a resin bonded diamond wheel. So we we then go in and we now dress it. A third operation. So we have a dressing stick, and we go in there and we jam the dressing stick in there and we dress the wheel. It's from 1960. I guess they thought of everything. Hey, I'm from 1961, and I'm pretty accurate. I guess I'm liquid cool. All right. The spindle, the spindle is off. I know you can't tell on the video. So if I feel the wheel, I can feel the diamond roughness, okay? If we trued that wheel and we didn't dress it with the dressing stick, and I went to feel the wheel, it would feel smooth because the resin might be at the same level as the as the diamonds and it's not going to cut well so we go in there and we dress it and that makes the diamonds boop, proud of the resin um so i use i use a qualichem xc 251 i uh, sorry 250 coolant at three percent and uh my tank has about 30 gallons of that Okay, so the wheel's looking good. The tool is in the right place. This pin is pulled. This pin is pulled. We're powered up. So I, I already checked for interference. Okay, so we can now run this. It helps. It also helps if you actually plug it in. You have to plug the, uh, the extension cord into the wall. That always helps. All right, so there we go. We have a nice control here. And we can change directions if we want. And we're good to go. So that's all set. We're going to be grinding in one position so that the table is going to stay on the manual uh, control. Um, no German beer. No, we don't use German beer as a coolant. Although, uh, if you tell me it's a good idea, we might try that. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start up the wheel because I want the I want the spindle warmed up, and then I'm gonna start. You know, I'm gonna be careful because I have a running wheel. wheel is now starting and I'm going to drink some tea. Uh, finger, 
finger on the wheel housing. I'm, I'm trying to feel for any vibration. Feels really good. Like nothing there. There's always something there, but there's nothing there. Okay, we, we've referenced the wheel, so it's ready to work. You can come down. So all I'm doing right now is um, I'm trying to get this thing centered up. I am not doing any grinding, and I'll be retracting the wheel in a second. You can see how tight things get here. But that looks good to me. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I'm retracting the wheel, getting it out of the way, and pulling the table forward, and now I'm going to go get an indicator. I may move the camera for a little better view here, too. In fact, let's see if we can do that. I'm going to put you right inside. There's a view most people don't get. <laughs> I, I got to go get my indicator. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm probably going to change the view here in a minute, but all right, this guy is nice and tight on here, and this is ready to do a measurement. Yep, wrong one. So that was my mistake. I yanked on it and came off. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in for a uh, centering measurement. All right, so let me show you what's going on. May not be obvious. All right. So I'm putting I'm putting the indicator on the on the barrel of the uh, of the D bit. So I'm I'm not doing anything with any of the cutting surfaces or the relieved surfaces. I'm just trying to get the cylinder centered up, okay? I, I think I'm going to put you on the other side, actually. Okay. So, I'm spinning this by hand, and I can confirm that there's... Uh, plus and minus 15 thousandths, roughly, which is what I uh, had set before. But I'm gonna set, I'm gonna make a measurement. I'm gonna make a measurement from here to here. Those should not be different. And they're pretty close. It's not perfect. I will say that this V, the, the V block in here can be improved. Okay. And if I, it doesn't really matter too much for what we're doing, but it's not perfect. 
Okay, so now going going from the top. to the bottom, I'm getting 13 thousandths, okay? I want to, I want to cut that down to a, uh, a total of five thousandths. So I'm gonna get my, uh, I'm gonna get my Allen wrench and we're gonna loosen things up. Oh, also, I'm going to drop the pin in here so that it doesn't go walking on me. So the pin is set to 180 degrees, and, and I've locked it. So now I can, I can loosen these nuts. Now, they have a plastic washer here, so I can put a little bit of tension on them, and it's not going to go flying all over the place. little tension okay and now I'm going to take my little thwacker which is brass and I'm going to thwack it and I ran out of range all right let's see how we did <clears throat> Nope. All right, I went the wrong way. And the reason I went the wrong way is that when I did it the first time, I was using a different indicator. Okay, let's see. All right, so that's a total of about seven and a half, okay? So now we're gonna get serious and actually calibrate this. So my needle's on zero, and now I'm gonna go 180 degrees, and no, nope, my needle is on 17, so I'm gonna come back to zero, and I'm gonna Give it a little more. There's five. That's looking good. So that's about a total of six and a half. I'm gonna bring it back to 180. I'm gonna take off uh, about three three quarters of a thousandth. That's about right. Reset my zero. And that's looking good. That's actually just where I want it. So let me show you that. Okay. So here's the zero five. Okay, and I'm now the next thing I'm doing, this is very important. I'm confirming that when it's reading five, that it's five as in closer to me, and that's the cutting side. And then when I go drop down to the other side, which is says zero, that's the non cutting side. That's what I wanted. I wanted five thousandths, okay? So we're right where we want to be. So now we're going to tighten up these nuts. I'm going to lock this again. That's nice and tight. I'm going to take the easy way out, go over here, go to zero, lock it. Tighten this up. 
And now I'm going to just do a, going to pull the locking pin and just do a spin. Okay, zero plus five. Exactly what I want. Okay. I could even turn on the the motor. And there you go. So this is how we we're putting in our relief. Um, just to remind you that the first time I did this, I put in too much. I didn't like it. I ran with it and didn't hurt anything, but I wanted to regrind it. So nothing else is changing. The angle is still good. I'm checking my gauge blocks are, are still tight. Um, everything else looks great. So I'm going to take my indicator off. And uh, we're out of uh, excuses here. I think we're ready to grind. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out... Um, the most important tool we've got is our Sharpie, right? And I'm going to Sharpie up the end of this thing so that I can see what gets ground. And that will make me happy. There's no such thing as too much Sharpie. You can always take it off with some... Uh, isopropyl alcohol or or methanol whatever you have handy and there we go Okay, so at this point, I will take any questions you have because the next thing is grinding. Welcome aboard, everyone. All right, so the plan is I'm going to come down with the wheel. Uh, I am just going to operate the grinder as a manual grinder. And I'm just going to kiss that um, the end until all the Sharpie is gone, you know, plus plus a click or two. And that's it. That's the whole thing. And I've, I will have reground my tool um, for five thousandths of relief. That means I'm going to get a total... Um, in a total movement of the point of ten thousandths diameter. So when I go to run this thing on the mill, it's going to behave like I have a flat bottom of ten thousandths. That's all I'm going to do. Uh, there are you can make arguments about put a flat bottom on the nose. We're going to explore that, just not right now. Okay. I don't see any questions, so I'm going to just keep proceeding here. Um, so. One thing you should know is I'm coming over here. Um, I'm going to be operating this in, in its standard Fanuc control mode. So I'm actually using the, um, the readout. That, that's all I'm doing here. So I can, go, I can go X, origin, Y, origin, Z, origin, you know, and I could set my numbers. So this is what I'm going to be using. This has five digits after the decimal point, and it's not fooling around. Okay? So, um, in the interest of safety, I'm going to leave this guy over here. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to put you on the stool here so that you can see the hand motions. There's not going to be much going on here otherwise. How's that? You'll be able to see the hand motions and hear the cursing. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to turn on my uh, my mist extractor. It acts like a vacuum for the carbide dust, which we like. Henry says, how do you like Fanuc? I've only heard and read it would be pretty unintuitive to program. It's unintuitive to program, but once you learn a Fanuc control, you've learned all Fanuc controls. My mill, my sharp mill has a Fanuc control on it, so, you know, I was pretty used to it. Um, it's a good control as far as being bulletproof and getting the job done, but it's in the user interface, user friendliness department. <laughs> it's not too good. Hey, look at the Siemens control. Uh, that's on Adam uh, Demuth's uh, mill. Uh, uh, sorry, grinder, grinders, and um, and he likes them. So look at the Siemens control. I have no experience. It's also German. Is <laughs> Tuck. You're the best. Tuck says, isn't it pronounced? <laughs> oh, I'm not even going to repeat it. That was awesome, dude. No, I have to repeat it because if you're watching this as a video, Tuck says, isn't it pronounced Fanuk? He said it in the text. In the text, he said it. it okay. All right. <laughs> I needed that. Um, I'll also point out that the, this grinder has a down feed of, um, 0.1 10 thousandth, so basically a hundred thousandth of an inch per click, which is 10 millionths. Yeah. So, uh, I... As soon as I get positioned, I'm actually going to go into that um, down feed rate of 10 millionths per click. It is so nice. Uh, really, I'm totally hooked on, on, that, on that setting. But right now, it's set to uh, five, a half a thousandth per click. So I can move the head pretty fast. And there's also a, a jog switch. Now I'm going to get my head in here, so. So this is pretty, this is pretty tight here. I'm going to open the, the guard. I don't feel like, uh, like making this a game of, uh, of thousands. So this guard's going to stay open and away from the work. So, so, the flat that I'm going to grind is now centered on the wheel, okay? I'm still about a hundred thousandths below the wheel. And then I'm just going to bring it up until it just kisses. And then I'm going to, I'm going to move it across the wheel and I'm going to bring it down. And I'm, like I said, I'm just going to clean it up. I will set, I will set the, um, the readout so that I can give you a measurement of how much it took, but I'm not really watching the numbers at this point. I'm just watching the tool. Okay. So I'm pretty close. <clears throat> so I'm going to switch to very fine mode. So again, this is 10 millionths a click on this hand wheel. And the, the in-feed, uh, or I should say the, um, the Z-axis hand, hand wheel is left on two thousandths per click. And that's just for traversing the tool. Um, there's nothing, the only thing that might hit here is my coolant nozzle. So I'm just gonna spin that out of the way. 
everything looks good. So here we go. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn on my uh, my mist collector. Mist collector on. Okay, I heard the first touch of the wheel, so I'm going to reset my numbers. Here we go. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you uh, let you see the super close view here. might even be able to hear it. So I'm just plunging now. Trying to get some more light on here. So we're about halfway down, okay, and we've gone down 12 thousandths of an inch, all makes sense. I think we'll go down to uh, 30 or 35. We'll stop at 25, I guess. Okay, there's 20.
That's 20, 29 and a half. And then we'll do one more plunge and pass and we're done. Let me take you out of here and show you what we got. I think we're done. Any questions? You know, most of the hard work was done, so it, this seemed like it was pretty easy, but that's because the setup was already set up. So I think we're pretty well finished here. I'm going to bring the head up. I'm going to close my door. And, um, yeah, I'm out of excuses. <laughs> I should go try this. Uh, so maybe I will. All right, guys. Uh, by the way, that was a total, that was a total down feed on the head of 30 thousandths. So, um, it cleaned everything up. It looks good. There were no uh, no major surprises. I'm I'm feeling the. Let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm just looking for any any schmutz. Uh, I think almost a hundred percent must have gotten uh, sucked up uh, by the mist collector, which makes me happy. So there's very little cleanup. And that concludes our uh, correction of the D-bit for today. And I'll, uh, I'll actually publish this video uh, on Instagram. And I will eventually get it on the YouTube feed just so you guys have a reference. Uh, if you have any questions, don't, feel free to DM me. But I think I'm going to call it quits. And actually, i got to put a little food in my tummy because I'm getting a little hungry. And grinding when hungry is bad. So take care, guys. We'll catch you later.